Hello everyone, it's me again, and today I'm going to be starting my um, cloning series of tutorials. And um, I already gave an overview in one of my previous videos, so today is actually going to you know, begin the whole thing. So let's get start started then. Um, so today what we're going to talk about is what I like to call um, PCP. Now, what's PCP? Well, PCP stands for planning, constructing, and priming. So, um, what this means is that you know planning is kind of kind of looking at the uh, your DNA sequences and gathering, you know, your materials basically, right? And uh, constructing is when you put everything together and you want to build your construct. And lastly, priming is when you uh, design your primers and or order them. So these are the three things we're going to talk about today. And uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to uh, leave a comment below this video. But I will try to make everything as clear as possible. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, whoops, not this window. It's not what I want. Okay, this is what I want. Um, so I'm using the uh, PFAS back as my cloning vector. You know, depending on what you use, it varies. But you know, in all cloning vectors, we have these uh, multiple cloning sites, which is what um, we can insert our DNA that we want to express um, into. And uh, these multiple cloning sites are designated by these uh, series of uh, unique restriction, restriction enzyme sites displayed here. And today, what I'm going to do is be clo I'm going to be cloning into the ECOR1 site and the XBA1 site. Now, how did I decide these um, restriction enzyme sites? Well, the most important thing when you're deciding is uh, re realizing whether or not these restriction enzyme sites are, uh, you know, these restriction enzyme sites are in your insert or not, because you're going to be digesting your insert with these um, as well before the ligation. So this is our DNA of interest that we will be using today. This is this kind of a random sequence from some glycoprotein. It doesn't really matter what this is that I'm using. You know, you know for your uh, construct, it's going to be you know, very specific for whatever you want to do. But for me, for this tutorial, to keep this simple, it's just pretend this is just some important uh, protein that I want to express. And uh, what I want to do is check in here to see if I have those two uh, restriction enzyme sites, right? I don't want them to be in here because I don't want them to be cutting out my DNA, and that's not good. So what I'm going to do is go to um, enzymes, enzymes displayed, go to all enzymes. I'm going to go to find uh, ecor one which is in here. It's all alphabetical. So ecor one I click on it. I don't have anything. Okay. And then I go to... Uh, X spot one, which is right here. Boom, I clicked on it and I have nothing. So now that I know that my insert does not contain the uh, two restriction enzyme sites, I know I'm safe and I can use these um, sites. Whoops, sorry, I keep clicking on the wrong tab here. Um, so I can use these two sites, the uh, ECOR one and the XBOT one. If you do find you know, these sites or whatever sites you are using in your insert, then what we want to do is just you know change to a different site, uh, try different combinations and combinations, and eventually you will find a pair that will work. Usually that's the case. So now that I have that, what I like to do personally is okay. Think about this visually. What do I? What am I really trying to do? Okay. So what I'm really trying to do is cutting at these two sites, right? So cutting out the middle part between these two sites, and then putting that DNA insert between them. So what I like to do is highlight at the end of this restriction, the first restriction enzyme site, and then just go up so it can highlight the entire PFAS back vector. So like that, then I just do like control, control copy, file, new DNA, then view. So if you expand this down again and down again and you scroll to the bottom, you can see, okay, so this is um, at the end of the ECORA1 restriction site. Next, what I like to do is go into my DNA of interest and then highlight all this. It's Control A, Control C, and then go to 
the pro the file just opened up and then put it right next to it. So there. So this is my DNA of interest starting at the first restriction that I'm site. At the end, what I like to do, of course, is um, go back to it, and then you want to finish it off. What you want to finish it off at is at the uh, expo one site in this case. So what I like to do is just highlight here and then to the end like that. Control copy and um, go to my untitled sequence and then control V again and there we go. So now as you can see we have expo one site and the uh, ecolor one site, right? And in between that we have our DNA of, of interest. Now, um, depending on the cloning vector, but usually you need to include your own start and stop codons. Um, so what I like to do is go between here and um, go into uh, A, just add in ATG as, a, as the start codon. And then we're going to, uh, oops, sorry. And then what I would like to do is at the end, I like to add a TAA as my stop. So now I have my stop and start called on. Now what I want to do is check if everything is in frame. And by doing that, you just click on the open reading frames and um, to find the one that reads fully through. And I already went through numbers and I found it was, whoops, not that one. It was number one, I think, yeah. So you see this little arrow here? So this indicates to my start. So everything's a little faded out fade out arrow in the case of ATG start. So we have the start here and then scroll down and then boom, see, perfect. It stops exactly where I wanted to stop the stop code on that I just inserted. Um, and uh, here's the more, this is the same thing what I just showed you, but kind of cleaned up and this looks a lot better. Everything's labeled. So at this point we went through the uh, planning and the constructing, right? So now we've constructed our construct with our um, designated, the first restriction is on site, the added start codon, right? Then between that, we have our DNA that we want to express. Then we have our stop codon, and finally we have our you know final um, restriction in on site. And so now, uh, oh yeah, and also of course we made sure everything was in frame, very important. So we reached through, perfectly fine, and this is exactly what we want. So the last thing what we want to do for a cloning project is actually design the primers, right? So um, I already went ahead and did that already. You can refer to my um, PCR basic primer designs, basically the same thing, except I take the template from my construct, right? Remember, your DNA of interest do not contain your ECOR one site, XBOT one site, and it does not contain your um, uh, your start and stop codons either. So those you need to put on top of your primers. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So this, these are the primers that are designed, and I'm gonna tell you what they each of these mean. Okay, let's start with the easiest thing to explain. It's this, uh, whoops, that was weird, okay. It's this uh, violet color, um, violet color um, insert. So we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right, eight triplets. So we have 24 bases, so these 24 matches exactly to the uh, original uh, 24, I mean, of your DNA of interest, you know, starting with GGA which I have right here, GGA. So at this point, this is just regular primer design, right? Follows the top strand of your um, DNA, your four primer. Before that, but however, I need to add an ATG start, right? Because this doesn't include it in the template, but that's okay. Because as long as we have around 20 bases here, well, I have 24 at this point, it'll match exactly, so it doesn't matter. So we can add more, we can add bases that don't match and it'll, uh, it'll replicate these templates as well. So we have, we need to add ATG, all right? And before that, we need to add the, uh, the restriction enzyme site, the E. coli restriction enzyme site, which is GAA, TTC. And then before that, we need to add 
a nonsense sequence, basically, which means that you you can't because when you're going to be PCRing this fragment fragment outright, you can't have the ends of a PCR product with just the restriction size. It doesn't cut very well. You need some the enzyme needs part more DNA to kind of hang on to. So that's why you just put these random sequences at the end, which is in green, which is it, it, it can be anything, but usually you don't want them to be repeated. So I just do like GCA, TGA, it can be, you know, whatever. So we have a random sequence for the restriction enzyme. We have the restriction enzymes, the E. car one, we have the start, and then we have the actual beginning of our sequence. Same thing what I did before uh, for the reverse primer, which is the uh, reverse complement, like I showed you before um, how to do that. You can just kind of scroll to the bottom, and um, so starting so starting here, so this is the this is the stop. What you want to do is kind of you know highlight from the bottom, um, from the bottom right uh, to left, and then you just control copy that, and then you get the reverse complement of the reverse primer. Again, the violet represents the exact matches of your DNA. This uh, teal color is the stop codon. In this case, is uh, TTA. Um, and then you have the uh, restriction enzyme site, TCT, AGA, and then you have the, uh, finally, the kind of nonsense such stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for the uh, designing primer thing. So what you want to do next is just kind of make sure that everything is correct. I know the four primer is correct usually because, you know, you just control copy, but what you really want to make sure is it reverse primer is right or not? And I'm just gonna double check this right now. Let's see. Um, so it should be something around like TCT, AGA, TTA. Let's see if that matches up. It's TCT, AGA, TTA. Yep, it matches up perfectly fine. And um, I have my reverse primers. So again, four primers. From the five prime to three prime direction, we have some nonsense sequence in order to provide the restriction enzyme to be able to cut at a restriction site. The E. coli one restriction restriction enzyme site that we added on the ATG start codon, and then after that we have the uh, the be the beginning of uh, of the sequence that we want to insert. For the reverse primer, we have from five prime to three prime, we have the nonsense um, sequence again. Then we have the x one restriction site. Then we have um, the the uh, stop stop codon, and then we have the um, you know DNA template that matches up exactly to our insert. And that's pretty much it. I knew, I know that um, that went by kind of fast. I was trying to you know get everything down everything down in 15 minutes, but I think that pretty much covers it. Um, again, if you have any question or something is not clear, feel free to contact me. Feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. You know, anything's fine. Um, but that's basically how you would design primers for cloning. Of course, it's more complication if you're doing, um, you know, different, you know, multiple ligations or you, you're, you know, using you know, more than one vectors and you got to, you know, sub-clone and such. And in that case, it's just more steps, but it's always basically the same thing. So if you have questions about you know, sub-cloning or whatever, go ahead, you can just message me directly about that and see if I can help you out. Or maybe I'll do a, you know, video in the future about, you know, more specifics. But this is a, uh, I think, pretty much covers, you know, a lot of cloning cases that you just want to clone in a specific insert into, uh, into a vector. So, yes, that's pretty much it. Um, Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helped you out in your uh, experiments. Hope you learned something new today. Um, hopefully this wasn't too confusing or anything. Again, I apologize if that went by kind of fast, but I think I uh, covered uh, the gist of it anyway. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And yeah, so after this, we're going to be talking about how to uh, proceed on, on to the next step once you have your PCR product. Okay then, thank you again for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and I'm signing out.